Okay, so there are two things that I forgot to mention in part one. The first is that we added these two little trim pieces that you see on the top of our flanks. These help our flanks fly straight instead of popping up when tension is placed on the spring. Also make sure that when you're gluing your wooden locks in, the ends of them are not touching the bottom of your base. This just helps them flow more freely when they're being pushed by your launcher. For the mechanical lever that we used to cock back our launcher, we just used a small quarter inch dowel and then cut out a little notch for it on one of the guardrails. Okay guys, we finally got this thing functioning correctly. So we just want to run you through quickly of how it works. This is our launch pad, we call it. It has the locking mechanism, which is just a 16th piece of maple. Here, this is what I would call the engine. So I'm just gonna put it, put it together just to show you how it works. So as you pull it, forward, this spring back here loads up and it gets ready to hit that little bolt that we have inside the blade. So when you continue to push, bam, shoots out that way. And the little notch that we put in the blade locks on this spring. So essentially, the whole blade works the same way when you do it in reverse. So as you push back, you keep going, you keep going, you keep going, you keep going, and bang, shoots right back and locks. Pretty nifty, but extremely difficult to actually pull off. Now if we're completely honest with you guys, we didn't go all out in trying to sharpen our blade up. Even though it's made out of one of the toughest woods in the world, and we probably could have got it to even cut some paper, we didn't take too much off of it to make it super sharp. Mainly because it was already small enough as it was in relation to the size of our staff. We didn't want to have a big walking stick and have a tiny little toothpick shooting out of the top. If I had to redo these designs again, I would definitely push a lot harder with the wood burn. Since this wood was so dense, sometimes the pressure that I was applying wasn't strong enough to actually carve into the wood at all. So after I pulled the paper off, I ended up not being able to see some of my lines. So I just kind of had to eyeball and guess where I thought the designs would fill out. After I finished decorating the blade, it was time to move on and make the housing for our knife. We made this out of the two end pieces that we cut out of our middle boards for our staff. We then laid out the dimensions of our knife on both boards and routed it with, well, a router. We then screwed both pieces together and took it to the bandsaw where we just put some designs and kind of made the top a little bit fancier for where the blade was going to shoot out of. One thing that I mentioned at the end of part one was that the top was going to be a little bit bulkier than it seemed it should be. And this is something that we can't exactly help because we're trying to stick a humongous blade with an internal mechanism into an area that's supposed to fit in the palm of your hand. If we ever make a version 2.0, our best bet would be to make the entire knife portion out of metal. This way we can make it thinner and smaller and more practical to fit inside of a walking stick. done sanding the majority of our handle, we went and cut the layout for the majority of our staff. While there was some debate on how bumpy or smooth we wanted to make the main portion of the stick be, we eventually met somewhere in the middle to where it was a little mix of roughness and smoothness at the same time. guys so we got our main staff here done even though it's a little heavier up top it kind of has to be because of the mechanism but now it's time to decorate this bad boy all I'm gonna do now is just doodly doo doo on there so uh, let's do that to give credit where credit is due it was actually dad's idea to make the owl while I was a little bit skeptical at first eventually I bought into it and it ended up looking really nice <laughs> As you've most likely noticed by now, this thing took us a really long time to make. So in these coming clips, you'll see us going between the shop and our house, going back and forth because we wanted to try and make this as quick as possible, but it didn't go as smoothly as we would like, so you'll just have to put up with some of the bad lighting. <laughs> So 
So typically we don't like to paint our wood only because we like to see the actual wood grain in our projects. But since we were making an imagery of an actual animal, we thought it was only right that we use some enamel based paints to just give it a more vibrant and lively feel. Alright, so this thing is not exactly practical. Because most of the components of the internal mechanism are made of wood, if you tried to stab anything, the blade would just break or go back inside and it wouldn't pop back out. So again, if we ever do make a version 2.0, making it out of metal would probably be our best bet if we wanted one that we could actually use in the wilderness. If you're wondering why most of the staff looks gray in these clips, it's because after we thought we were done with this build, I wanted to come back later and put on the nice dark walnut finish that you saw in the teaser trailer and paint the background silver. I just think it complemented the owl really nicely. So, um... <laughs> yeah, that's about how we feel right now. This one took us a long time. That's why we didn't get the videos out until, like, two weeks for us, our normal schedule or whatever. But I tell you what, it is very satisfying to see it fling out and fling in. Is there anything you would have done differently? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to do a version 2.0. Oh, yeah, a version 2.0. Yeah, we, we, we had some lots of ups and downs in this one. A lot of trial and error. But it's time to move on. <laughs> on to the next project. And thanks again, guys, for watching. Make yep. sure to subscribe, like, comment. Uh, make sure you comment where you found the boat if you did or didn't. Thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you next week, hopefully. Maybe. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>